This is Good Morning Mumbai with Rishi K. I'm absolutely stunned. My friend Sanjay Suri is in studio and um, uh, he's presenting uh, La uh, Mis- Mirables. I hope I've got the pronunciation right. Uh, Alexis is going to correct me on this one. How do you pronounce it, Alexis? Les Miserables. <laughs> Les Miserables. I just saw Les Miserables and I urge you people, it is getting a theatrical release on the 13th. Please go and watch this film. It's a landmark, nominated for both the, both the Oscars as well as the Golden Globes. And of course, uh, most importantly, won the jury prize at Cannes. Please to welcome Alexis, uh, who plays uh, the principal part, and Sanjay, who's presenting the film. Nice to meet you, Alexis, and a big fan of your work after watching this film. <laughs> Namaste. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Sanjay, welcome back into the studio, brother. Thank you so much, Rishi. Your, your uh, interiors have changed. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm I'm very keen to know the market for these phenomenal films which are coming in with subtitles. You know, Parasite did so well. You did Shoplifters. So give me an idea or a perspective of the kind of audience there is for these films in India. See, um, I feel and I know there is a larger audience, but uh, the entire ecosystem doesn't exist, Rishi. So... Uh, having grown up, I mean, I remember Doordarshan, we used to watch Kannad films, Malayalam films, uh, Bengali films. But then slowly, uh, when when the mainstream sort of TV started, everything became ad-dependent. And similarly with films, there is no destination for these films. But if you go to the film festivals, whether it's Mami or Kerala Film Festival or Kolkata, these films, you people are standing, queuing up right since morning to catch a glimpse of these films. So there is an audience, but there has been no ecosystem, no destination for these films. I'm happy that Parasite won uh, the Oscar in the main category as well. So it's sort of extended into the other market, which people used to be curious about Oscar films. We released Shoplifters, very well received. Um, India has seen some other Iranian films being released. Uh, but also, it's also a habit of not, you know, watching films with subtitles. Um, so, but I think with Parasite and Choplifters, this market is growing. So we can actually, Parasite went up to, I think, more than 100 screens, which an, with an Indian uh, indie film would uh, would kind of, you know, peak at that level. So this there is a growing audience. There's a growing uh, the audience exists, but I, I think a regular programming and continuity is needed. I understand that this actually started off as a short film before it became a big feature film. Right. And based on uh, Victor Hugo's novel. So tell us about the background before you actually ended up filming the, the feature. Um, it's the, the name Les Miserables comes from the novel of uh, Victor Hugo because the story takes place in the same area as the novel, uh, so it means that 200 uh, years uh, after the book, the poverty is still on this uh, territory. And uh, we start, me and my friend Lajli, uh, the director, uh, three years ago, he came with um, a script about um, police violence uh, in his area because he was doing a lot of cop watching, that means that he was filming uh, the cops in his area and one day he filmed uh, police violence then he sent the, the tape to the journalist and the policemen were sentenced so he wanted to talk about this and he wrote the, the script I helped him to, to write it uh, kind of better and he asked me to play in it we had a lot of success so producers came to us to do the long feature I, f- I find it fascinating that uh, the kind of diversity that is shown in the film and it's such a melting pot isn't it France there is uh, you know people of European descent and then there are people of the African descent and the Arab descent and some of them are you know obviously because they are immigrants are not very well to do economically in- uh, independent or financially independent as it were and that causes a lot of crime on the streets because if they are unemployed kids and youth mm-hmm. uh, that is bound to happen so these areas must be very crime infested actually like like as is shown in the film and that is quite an interesting dynamic between the law and the various groups yeah that's right but uh, i must remind that all all of these people are french citizens Uh, they come from immigration but for two or three generations now (coughs) they are french just they have uh, different backgrounds different origin uh, from ex-colony 
And um, yes, they are uh, stuck in these suburbs without uh, transport, without cultural issue, uh, bad education. So it's and poverty. They they do the bad jobs for the for the the the, 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 the other people, the rich people, and uh, so there is a yes a lot of uh, criminality uh, because of this. They they try to to struggle to life, and they sometimes they choose the the bad way. Mm. Sanjay. One thing is to turn around and say this is an Oscar-nominated, Golden Globe-nominated film and it won a prize in Cannes, so I'm going to bring it to India. The other is, yeah, fine, it's award-winning, but what is the relevance to this country? And there is so much relevance. All these things he's talking about could easily be about India or it could be about the suburban Delhi or Bombay. Yes, uh, to to comment on the first part, uh, when we decided on the film, it had uh, not won the con and it had not oh. been gone for... Because when you wow. when you when you're watching it, you decide you meet the sales company, and you negotiate. Because uh, before it wins the prize, the the prize can also go up, right? <laughs> once once the once the prize is won, so and the Oscar journey and the Golden Globe that happens later. Uh, for us, we connected with the film, and like you said, it's relevant. See, I personally have been a victim of ethnic cleansing, so I've I've I know how it is to feel like the other, and like Alexi is saying that. Uh, these people have been there for two, three generations, which means uh, 20 years, 30 years. So their life standards have not improved. Um, it's development does not only mean buildings and uh, etc. So education, healthcare, and the discrimination, you know, the, the disparity, the non-inclusiveness. That's an issue which is very relevant in, I mean, we've grown up with that um, in India. So it really touched a chord and so that's the decision I said this film you don't even have to read the subtitles to understand uh, the emotions and the human drama it's been called a political drama but I think it's a human drama mm. uh, set in the backdrop of uh, uh, of this class divide misuse of power yet at the same time acknowledging the frustration everyone goes through so it's not black and white. And that's what I loved about the film. Yeah. Les Miserables, please go and check your local listings. 13th at a cinema near you. Alexis, only because you also wrote this film, you seem to understand the pain of all these various groups of people who are fundamentally all French nationals but with different antecedents. Are you a, just a bit about yourself? Are you a suburbs boy? Did you grow up in the cities? Mm, no. I, how, how do you understand this pathos so much? I was born in the center of Paris, but I was always curious, and I had uh, many friends who come from there. Uh, so I, I crossed the, 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 how do you say? I, I went to the suburbs. I went to, to see how they live, and they are coming also to Paris. Uh, largely, the director is also uh, a person who is very curious, who is uh, looking to, who wants to see something else, and who fight for himself and for the people uh, he like. To, to understand this, so I try to understand this pain. It's very uh, hard, but um, it's also the problem. It's because uh, when you've got this kind of poverty, everybody's trying to help his own community, and uh, poverty causes the, the 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 people get more divide, and that's the problem because the 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 the, the, the government or the the people who get the power they want these people to be divided and to fight each other, so they don't fight. Uh, the government uh, or the, 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 the powerful people. It's, it's called the divide and rule policy and Sanjay will tell you that in India we've seen it from colonial times. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I have to say. But you know, I have to say this, I have to say this about this film is that do not, all of you who are listening to this, think that it's only a gritty uh, film about underbelly. It's got moments of, of humor. Like for example, Sanjay, you know, you, you, you know that the humor when the gypsies come in and you know they, it's almost as though they're talking about a human being and it's not a spoiler you know it, yeah, it's no. as though they're talking about a human being but actually it's a lion cub it's a lion and, cub and yeah, you've got to have humor in there man the, yeah. they, they, that's what they do it beautifully so organically without digressing and it's it doesn't seem like uh, an, an item scene you know uh, it's been planted there but I think the multicultural and and uh, various ethnicities living living in the same suburb or around uh, very territorial, like you go to a jungle, one line, another line, they're territorial. So these places also get very territorial. And uh, 
And that's that's what Alexi's saying it causes the problem. So yes, humor. I I back you. It might be gritty, but it's very energetic. It's very stylish. Yeah. And Lajli's first film, I must compliment uh, the director uh, for for how the screenplay, how the movie moves. You know, it's not static. It yeah. it's but it's a big screen experience. Please don't watch it on your mobiles. <laughs> it is, you know, because Indians in particular, if you tell them festival film, you know, boring, slow, it's not. It's gritty. It's fast. So the entertainment ele- element has got to be emphasized. I, I'm also very fascinated by the child actors, you know, because most child actors are, you know, in English, the world called precocious. You know, they they look very fake. I mean, they're not to blame. They're children, mm-hmm. but the child actors are absolutely phenomenal. The boy who plays Isa, for example, who's a little boy in there, and who's a victim of of police brutality. I mean, who's this kid? He's fantastic. He's crazy. I I, I really I am um, to play with with him was such a great experience. He's so natural. He's not looking uh, at the camera or all around. And when he started, he was very shy. He, and he's a rough kid. He come from this area. He, he had a lot of problem. Uh, he's, as the character, he, they got a lot of similarities. But at the end of the shooting, he was just telling Lodge, please put the camera here. And he was <laughs> noticing everything. It's very impressive. <coughs> Yeah, and and you know what they say, and we've seen that enough in India too. That if there is a revolution, it always comes from the younger generation, it comes from the kids and the students and things like that. And Absolutely. we see, we saw that play out so recently in India. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that is the entire messaging on the film. Um, basically, address the germ, the seed, because if you go wrong, the seed, how it populates. Um, it's it's going to be a reflection of what you're feeding them. So one has to be very, very careful what we say, what we speak. Let's not be irresponsible. The next generation, how we want to how we want to look after our own children. There's someone else child on the streets. So we need to have a different approach. I would love, love to show this film um, to um, to anyone who's who's in a position of power. Whether it's the police or the or the state, I think it it sensitizes you if you're not sensitized, and if you are already sensitized, it still further awakens something in you, because we tend to forget very easily. So I think it it poses a, a very very organically a very effective and powerful um, message and a sen- sensitization in in in, in the form of entertainment. Yes. Uh, Alexis, now I want to c- come and talk about your part, which is Chris, you know, and uh, to me, it's, uh, it's, it's fascinating because you start off hating the guy and saying, what kind of guy is he? You know, why is he pulling up little girls and, you know, harassing them and things like that? And he's really nasty to the new cop and things like that. And then eventually, when you see the graph of your character, you know, from being ruthless at some time, for example, when he goes back home, and you know the young daughters are are playing. It's a very very interesting part. You you must have loved biting into this part. So a little bit about Chris, so that we can tease the audiences to go into the theaters. Yes, I I, I play Chris, uh, a, a policeman uh, um, who who uh, who is working here in this uh, bad area for ten years. He's the main cop. He's the the leading one, the the leader. And he's acting very, yes, with a lot of violence. He's corrupted and he's uh, racist. But we didn't want it to make him stereotype. So as everyone, he's very complex. And uh, uh, as the movie is, is, is um, moving, you, you see that he's, uh, he's very complex. He can have sense of humor. And you can see that he's very, very sad and uh, suffering from some something. And after you discover that he's going home, he got family, he got uh, two little uh, um, children. And so, yeah, it was very, very interesting for me as an actor to play. Uh, as uh, each cock say, as bad as is the character, as good is the, the movie. Uh, Sanjay, responses at screenings. Uh, I was in a screening uh, in which there was Shonali who directed Margarita with a straw and the sky is pink. Nandita Das was at that screening. Sandhya Amridul was at that screening. What are the kind of reactions you've been getting to people when, you, when you're showing them this wonderful film? They're completely taken in by the film and actually very, very happy that uh, a larger Indian audience is an opportunity to watch it. And more than that, uh, 
they they just um, just feel so relevant to our society that's that's the take home it's so relevant and they're going to you know talk about it and try and show the film to maximum people so it resonates the story it might be a local story it is globally themed it's all over the world we we have this uh, issue and uh, so it it's resonated it's it's touched a chord you know which they're taking home this f- film uh, last night uh, and you know, a few nights back we had a couple of scare- screenings and i'm still getting messages so it's staying with them and also the other complaint why don't we make these films here so <laughs> as i figured it out <laughs> yeah, i mean it's bound to inspire any young kid who's going into film school or is just learning trying to learn himself mm-hmm. and and you know you were talking a first time director here have you written scripts before i know you're um, an accomplished actor but no it it's the first script i wow. i i, I, wow. I so, yeah yeah so, so if young kids can watch this and be inspired and say you know I want to put out my first script. I want to direct my first film. I think yes. the the objective will be achieved. Yes, almost. and not only young. In fact, um, a writer I worked with Urmi Zubaykar. She was there yesterday, and uh, she loved it. And she was so re-inspired. She said, "I'm glad I watched this because you know somewhere you're kind of losing that touch in within the OTT sort of floodgates have opened, and when it's everything is data driven, uh, you may not be allowed to make what you want to make, and." Um, the studio system so where do the indies go so these films she was inspired she uh, last she wrote was leela and uh, she's worked on i am with us and she's worked on the bakar banerjee's films uh, as a writer and she's a very acclaimed writer and she had come and she's she was re-inspired mm. alexis give me reactions how was it uh, did you go to the globes did you go to the golden globes to the oscars as I went well to as the oscar yeah. yes how was it yeah But it's crazy to see all this cinema yeah. in cinema it's yeah. like Los Angeles it's like a city where everybody wants to be actor but uh, without camera <laughs> <laughs> so that is the the coolest line in the interview so far yeah, <laughs> yeah. they want is always acting in yeah. LA. Yeah, yeah they want action <laughs> but they don't want cut <laughs> so yeah but uh, as a foreign movie people are not looking much at you you know you're like your foreigner and they love their cinema and uh, but it was very good experience um, i went to the to, to also to independent film festival and uh, i saw all the, the the actors i like like william dafoe uh, scarlett johansson or uh, adam driver or uh, nicolas cage i mean a lot of people i uh, i'm sorry to interrupt but i'm going to now get down to this brass tack scarlett johansson is hot Is she as hot in real life? <laughs> <laughs> yes, just checking. Yeah, yes, she is. But, uh, you know, when I finish the, when you finish the Oscar and when the ceremony is uh, is done, if you don't get prize, everybody gets to go to take his limo to take the taxi, yeah. and yeah. everybody's mixed. So I was waiting for the taxi, and she was just in front of me under the rain, waiting for twenty well, yeah. minutes, and that's yeah. that's the law of the Oscar. If you <laughs> win, you get. You get a special, but, uh, but you know, uh, special taxi, and if you if you lost, you're with everybody, and you. <laughs> you, you know, but it's not looked down upon if you come in a taxi, right? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> yeah. So something to learn over here. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you, Rishi. I mean, we're sitting with with uh, the most promising actor in French cinema right uh, now. He just phenomenal. got the César Award. The film won the award. Oh, the many French, congratulations! French lovely, yes. lovely, lovely. And he's so grounded, and he's he's very simple, very cool, very casual. him and Ale- Alexi and Omar who's also here in India but I fed him some keema pao yesterday so he's got a stomach bug <laughs> you nasty man how can you do that to oh, our guest you got to do it <laughs> indian hospitality at least he'll say i had indian food you know that's the way it is so uh, you did manage to go to the globes and can but did you have reactions did you get the reactions from people how do they respond to it it was really crazy i i discovered the movie when i was in can on this big screen who is amazing and with 3000 people and it was the first time uh, i i was watching it after i've made it and so it was the reaction the people who were crying and who were you know coming to us and telling this this is a necessary movie this is a lot of humor uh, energy and it gives wanted to to make some some good stuff in life and to look at each other in another way so it was a uh, it's i can believe it now it's uh, we didn't accept, expect at all 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 of this reaction and prices so 
Uh, and you you must agree with me as a cinema lover and somebody who works in the media, Sanjay, that the shot taking in terms of the cinematography is breathtaking. I mean, whether it's the drone shots or, you know, the shots of the communities and how you it, it just sucks you in the camera. It so, sucks you yeah. in and it just exactly it just it's so organic and it's, it's so dynamic. It sucks you in and that actually plays on your mind. Because remember the, the, the visual enters your retina and works mm. on your on your mind and you just you get get seduced into the film. Who's a, who's a cinematographer? Would you like to tell us about him or her? Yeah. Uh, largely, um, he, I met him 20 years ago. He was an actor at the beginning. Then he did a documentary. So he, he's the cinematographer himself? Did he shoot no, himself? No, the, the, no, uh, the DOP. The sorry. No, yeah. the DOP is um, Julien Poupa. Um, he's an amazing person very with a lot of discretion and... Uh, a lot of energy because we didn't have so much money to do the movie it's like f one million and two hundred thousand something like this i mean it's it's a low budget for the for the french cinema and so we were spending all days from eight in the, to in the morning to eight in the evening shooting and getting everywhere and this area are uh, very oppressive so it's 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 you need energy and he and he got the eyes and he catch um, he didn't film the people as you know as as ugly he want he wanted to make everything beautiful and people beautiful and uh, it's, it's I, I I'm really impressed by but his it's, work. it's always moving the camera yeah, it's yeah. a lot of drone of course but a yes. lot of handheld yes even you know yeah, because most it, of the it captures that energy yeah yeah, yeah. It's, and it's sometimes like the unease and, and the restlessness also, yeah. so uh, sorry c come back now to uh, largely the, the director you, you were telling me about him and I interrupted you because I wanted to finish the yes. cycle of the of the mm -hmm. DOP so a little bit about the director um, but he comes from this area and he still live there he has no a lot of success but he don't want to move he he, he stay there with his family and he 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 built a school uh, in this area a cinema school uh, he was not a lot of money I know everybody wants to give him money to to, to participate yeah, because yeah. and uh, it's a school without money and without uh, age limits uh, you just go and he wants he didn't make school but he wants people from this area to go and to make cinema and he wants to show that you can do cinema even if you you don't uh, have money or you didn't have study cinema and um, he come from documentary so that's why this movie is like with the camera uh, uh, Run on and the gun. shoulder <laughs> and uh, and you you can you can feel it when you watch the movie you're uh, you're close to the character and yes. Yes. Fantastic. How beautiful yeah, is that? Beautiful. Uh, Les Miserables, the uh, French film with English subtitles presented, uh, brought to you by uh, the wonderful Sanjay Sudi and his Kava Entertainment and uh, a bunch of very interesting people who are associated with it. It's in theatres on the 13th and please check local listings. You must go and see this. This is fabulous stuff. Uh, and at the end of the day, I mean, whether we are at the Oscars like Alexis, uh, Sanjay, we're broadcasting out of a small room like this, or you going to Khan and things like that. Uh, we're all artists, man. I mean, we're kindred souls, and that's what binds us together. So uh, I'm, I'm just so happy. Keep making your art. And Thank you. Uh, Sanjay, keep bringing us, you know, films like this. Keep your antenna up and also creating all the original content that you do. That's really lovely. Thank and you. I want you to just... Signed this off with uh, an important thing you said, uh, or somebody said yesterday, saying that, you know, it's okay, it will come to OTT. You know, you might get onto the Netflixes and the Amazons of the world, but this is a cinematic experience, and some things those the, the phone can't do for you. So, See, why I, people need to get into the theaters to watch this? I related to uh, a WhatsApp relationship, an emoticon versus a real hug. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so when you go into the cinema theater, it's a dark room. It's your date with your cinema, and you are un giving it undivided attention. It, I think somewhere it's a community experience. Yeah, uh, watching a film in isolation and watching it with uh, many people, it has that different experience. We are sitting in a radio station at one time with our radios dead, yeah. and look what radios done. So I think, yes, certain films definitely need that cinema experience. Uh, Les Miserables is one of those. And you will enjoy. It's like Roma, even. It might be a <laughs> yeah. film you've watched it on your TV, 
But when it comes to the theaters, mm-hmm. you would want to watch it in the big screen mm-hmm. on the big screen. My last question is uh, revolving around uh, Women's Day, International Women's Day, Alexis. And this whole month we're celebrating on the radio station is International mm-hmm. Women's Month. And we are asking everybody who comes onto the radio station, who is a woman who inspires you? It can be somebody from your family, your friends, your circle, or it could be somebody popular. A woman who inspires you and why you're inspired by that woman. And uh, a shout out on Women's Day. Uh, it's, I think it's my it's my mom or my uh, grandmothers because they, uh, they teach me to never um, get uh, put myself into uh, in, in a victim and always uh, always fight and uh, yes it's, it, I think it's important to defend the, the woman and the woman rights uh, today uh, all men should always be in, on their sides to fight uh, all of the abuse uh, uh, power abuse sexual abuse and uh, it's very important and uh, it's more than a day I think it must be every day but it's 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 important Sanjay a woman that who's inspiring who you look up to my mother, uh, a victim of ethnic cleansing, lost her home, uh, husband, uh, business, two-time cancer survivor, but does not complain even once. And she's a fighter. She's fought it all along, remains positive. And there's so much to learn. And in connection with this film, actually, uh, we were young in when all this happened. So. Um, when you're slapped on the road for no fault of yours, you can go either way. And she gave us the wisdom to follow the path of peace and inclusive life at a very young age. And that's what sort of uh, um, remained with us. Never, never, no religious divide ever. Humanity was a religion. Yeah. Lovely. Alexis, thank you for rolling by. Sanjay, thank you, thank you for rolling by. See you thank soon, you. you guys. Thank Cheers. you so much, Richie. Always a pleasure. Great.